Okay. Um, okay. I think I have to sit down a bit. All right. So welcome back to BC 106, our second lecture today. We're going to spend a little bit of time uh, looking at some of the tools that are available for us to do Bible study. Um, the first tool that I want to share with us um, is it's called eSword, right? Um, I mean, uh, it's in the doc. It's in the document. So I'll just sh share that, and then I'll switch back to uh, my screen here. Um, so you can download this. It's free from uh, eSword.net, and uh, this tool has been around for a long time. So I've been using it from 2001, almost 20 plus years. Okay. So uh, it's a it's a very useful tool, right? Um, then there are other tools which we will talk about. But I would encourage you now. You know, there are other tools. So I'm not I'm not trying to promote only this tool. I'm just sharing this this one first because I use it and uh, I've used it for you know almost twenty plus years, and it's very good. But there are other tools which I, we will mention. Okay, so you use whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, this is something I've been very comfortable with. Uh, also, it's much simpler than the other tools. The other tools are there; uh, they are very elaborate. Uh, so it, it the more it has a lot more information. Other tools, but that makes it that much more difficult to study, to use. This one is very simple, easy to use. So let me. Um, um, if I sit down, they won't see my face, but that's okay, right? Because um, you're going to look at the screen, right? So let me uh, let me um, let me just uh, share my uh, screen. I'm going to share my screen so that I can just um, walk you through um, this tool. So. I have this tool. Let me just okay. I have this tool set up right here, so I launch it. Uh, it's free on Windows, right? So for those, uh, but I think they have a paid version for Mac. So um, all right, let me. I'll switch to my laptop camera. Um, um, the online students, can you um, see my screen? Um, oh, can somebody just tell me yes or no? Uh, you guys can see it. Okay. So I just launched eSword, right? So it's eSword.net. You open it up like this, right? So now, the advantage that we have here with, well, let me just pause. Uh, uh, online students, you can you can hear me and you can see my screen. Eastward. Pastor, all I can see is your uh, picture. You can only see my picture. Yeah. Okay. Let me pause here. Let me do the sharing again. Um. Okay. You're seeing. Let me share my screen. And then switch to eSword. Oops, not that. Not that, sorry. Switch to eSword. Can you see eSword now? No, Pastor. I'm going to try it again. All right, let me do a window. Uh, OK. All right. So now you can see eSword now. Yeah? Can you all see eSword coming up on your screen?
They're saying anything here? Um, can somebody unmute your mic and just say yes or no? Yes, Pastor. Can see. You can? Yes, yes. OK, great. Thank you. All right. So this is the tool. Like we said, you can download it free uh, from esore.net. They have a free version for Windows, but I think for Mac, they have a small paid. It's a small fee. So you can download for free, put it on your laptop, your computer. Now, it has lots of things built into it. Right? So here you see all the books of the Bible. right? And uh, there are free versions of the. Now, you see all these are different versions of the Bible. Right? Literal Standard Version, Modern King James, Message Bible, New American Standard. It's from 95, New American Standard, which is from 2020, uh, New King James, uh, and so on. So a lot of these versions are free. Okay, they come, you can download them into your eSword. Now, the King James Version, when you say King James Version Plus, it comes with what is referred to as the Strong's Numbers. That means these are the Greek words. So this in English, we have the word likewise. If you do your mouse here, that's the Greek word. All right. So we have what is called a Strong's Concordance. That means um, it, it gives you a number for every Greek, for every English word, there's a corresponding number. And then that goes to the Greek word. So for example, likewise, if I put my mouse here, you can see the Greek word. Yeah, you can see the Greek word, uh, and you can see the, the meaning. It gives you the grammar and the meaning of it. You can't see it very clearly, right, on the wall? On a, do you want to sharpen the focus here? Uh, just uh, if you can sharpen the projector's focus. All right. So, so if I, if I, you know, for example, I want to know what is the meaning of the word subjection, right? So in English, King James is the word subjection. If I click on this, I can go to Strong's, and I can look at the meaning. Yeah, that's the best. Huh? Okay. That's fine. So I can look at the meaning of this word. So subjection, the Greek word is hypotasso. And then what is the meaning? To subordinate, to obey, to be under, uh, and so on. It gives me all the meanings of it. And then we also have dictionaries. So here is one dictionary. It's called Thayer's Dictionary. So he gives you some more you know, the meaning of that that word, subjection, he tells you these are the meanings of that word. And you have other dictionaries, you know, for example, you have mounts. It, it gives you the meaning of that word and where, where the same word is used in other places in the New Testament. Okay. So like that, you have dictionaries here. And um, many of these dictionaries are free. You don't have to pay for it. Among the best dictionaries is the Wines Dictionary. Right, so the wine wines dictionary is a paid version. So you get a paid version of the wines dictionary, wines New Testament and wines Old Testament, and that you can search for words. I'll show you a little later. But are you all following me, or are you lost? Samajwara. Okay. So basically, you know. For for the English word subjection, I'm saying showing you how you can look up the Greek word and how you can get the Greek meaning of that word. You know, so you can look at it. Uh, the same thing you can do for Hebrew. So if you go to Genesis, I mean any Old Testament book, uh, you click on the chapter, you get the verses here. Now notice these are all Hebrew words. So the Lord said, you know, uh, so on. God said, I will make you a blessing. What is the word blessing? So you can do your mouse over here. You will see this. the word blessing means benediction. It means a pool, prosperity. So it means that. You can also go here to Strong's, and you can look up the Hebrew word, and he'll give you the meaning. Uh, you can see that Brown, he, has, he also has the Brown's Dictionary, gives you the meaning of that word blessing. right? So you, you can study. Very carefully, you can study the verse. You know, you can study each word, look it up in Hebrew, look it up in Greek. You can study it. So 
when you study like that, then when you speak, you have a lot of confidence because you know, hey, I have checked the Hebrew, I have checked, I know what I'm saying. You know, I'm not just speaking, and I have studied it, I've looked up the Hebrew, I've looked up the Greek, I know what it means, and I, you can speak with a lot of confidence because you have actually studied that verse. Okay? So, so this is one way of thinking. So you, uh, the, uh, the advantage is you have so many Bibles, uh, versions of the Bible available. Right? Some are paid, but most of them are free. You can just download and keep adding it. Yeah. Okay. Now, I remember before, before 2000, before the year 2000, when I used to study, I would be sitting at a table like this. Then I'll have different Bibles in front of me. So I'll have King, I will have my, my New King James Bible, I'll have Amplified Bible, I will have another NIV version, another Good News Bible. You know, I'll have four or five versions, physical Bibles, right? And then if I want to study a verse, I'll have to physically open it up in all these. And then this concordance was a big book. It was like a thick book. I still have it, or maybe I put it in the library. But it's a physical book, thick book. I have to manually turn, go search for the word, and look at the meaning. You know, and uh, Wine's New Testament Dictionary was a book, right? So I had to have it here. So to study one verse or one word, you have to open so many books to study. And you have to carry, you, know, it's, uh, you, you can't move it around. It's there on your table all the time. But that's how you had to study before. But once they released this software, it makes it so easy. All you have to do is move a mouse, right? <laughs> so little energy. <laughs> Just move your mouse, click a few tabs, and you can see everything so fast. It's made, you know, thing, it's made a big difference, you know, shifting. Now, I have those old books. I have, still have the Strong's Concordance, the Wines Dictionary, all those books that I used to use. I think um, I put it out in the library. Uh, but that's a big difference. Okay, that's how we used to study then, and now you, the, the software makes it so easy. And so you have the chapters, the verses, the scripture here. Now, very easy. If I want to know, example, suppose I go to Proverbs and uh, Proverbs chapter twelve, uh, verse one. Right. If I want to read the same verse in different versions, all I have to do is click on this compare tab. One click, and I can see this verse in all these versions, including Hindi. Jo shiksha or anushasan se prem karta hai. So you can read in Hindi, you can read in different languages if you want. I just put it in Hindi, thought I'll learn a little bit, but <laughs> I don't use it much. But you see, all different versions, and you can compare, right? The uh, uh, the, there is a lot of advantage in reading it in different versions. You can see, okay, how that same verse is being communicated in different versions. You know, see, so all it takes is one tab, click compare, and you can read that same verse in so many different versions of the Bible. Right now, imagine, you know, uh, right here in this simple tab here. I have maybe about 15 different versions of the Bible. Imagine physically having 15 different copies of the Bible and trying to turn into that same verse, 15 different Bibles. It so, takes so much time. Here, you just click on the tab, you can see it. It's done. Right? So it makes studying so easy. All right. Then you have a lot of other tools. For instance, it has a search function. So if I want to uh, search, so this is how it's useful to do a word study, right? So you can use a search function. And let's say I want to search for the word faith. So I type the word faith, and I say in which version of the Bible. So I want to search it in New King James. I can search from Genesis to Revelation, and I can search. And by just giving a click, I can see the word faith appears 229 in 229 verses in the Bible. Right? And it's giving me all the verses where the word faith is found. Just one tap, one click, sorry. And there it is. You know, So I can actually study the word faith. I can just go through from Old Testament into New Testament where the word faith is. It makes it so easy.
You got it? Huh? Uh, I'm sorry, what? It's not coming up there. It got stuck. Okay. Let me, uh, is it coming here on the screen? Oh, yeah, you can see it here. Uh, it's got stuck over there. Uh, online students, is it stuck for all of you? Like, is a screen frozen? Or are, you, are you with me? Okay. Um, you're with me so far? Okay. All right. So let's continue. Uh, um, since I, I am sharing my screen, I may not be able to read what you type in the chat. So just you know, unmute your mic and uh, you know, if you keep me informed in case you can't see anything, then uh, it'll help. All right. So let me go back to sharing my sharing e sword. Um, and uh, if you can just let me know. OK, so we're back in e sword. I just wanted to show the search capabilities, right? So you click on the search, you search for the word faith, and you can find every, everywhere, right? Now you can also do partial search, partial math. That means faith, for example, faith, the word faithful, right? So if you want to include other uh, the full forms, like faithful, so you do click partial match and you search again, it'll also include you know other places like faithful, unfaithful, so on. So there are 375 verses found. So you can study like that, you know. So um, if you want to search only in a book, in in one book, you can search. Huh? Oh, the pop-up window. You're not able to see the pop-up window. Okay. Oh, it's not showing. Uh, it's showing here. It's not showing on the online, no? Okay, let me see. Let me see. All right. OK. Oh, because that open the pop-up window opens, it opens a new window. Yeah, I will share my entire screen. Okay, share my entire screen now. Can you see the eSword? OK, you can see eSword, right? OK, all right, now let me, yeah, OK, now you can see. Thank you, thank you. All right, so um, what I was sh saying earlier was, you know, we could search for the word faith, and we'll be able to see in almost, you know, an instant, you can see everywhere in the Bible what, where the word faith is being used. Thank you, thanks. Right. You can also, you know, do a partial search, which means you'll find words that are faithful and so on. So you do a search again, uh, you'll find, you know, where word faithful, uh, wherever faith is used, faith and faithful, and so on. So you can do that. You can search within books. You can search within, you know, Old Testament, New Testament. Like, so you could. It's very useful doing this search. Okay. Um, similarly, the Wines Dictionary, Wines New Testament, you can search within the Wines di uh, the, the Dictionary. So this is where if you search within the dictionary, so I'm searching within Wines Dictionary, and I say, you know, I want to know the word faith in the dictionary here. So, of course, it gives me all the words here, and I can go to faith. Now, so Wine's Dictionary, faith, he tells me now, so this is like uh, 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 almost like he's done a word study for you. You can see this on the thing, yeah? 
Thank you. So he shows, you know, faith, the Greek word is pistis, and then he says, this is what it means. And he shows you, here's all, you know, where it is used in the Bible. Uh, how, how is the word used? Right? So like this, for example, let's look at the word love in the New Testament. So if we click on the word love in Wine's New Testament. So he says it's used both as a noun and as a verb. As a verb, agapo. So then he gives you the meaning of the word agapo. And then, but there are other words, Greek words used for love, philio, right? And he tells you philio is different from agapo or agape. A philio is referring to affection. Then there are the noun words. Uh, agape is, is a noun. Uh, philanthropia is another word, noun. Uh, and Philadelphia is brotherly love. So basically, you know, that one word, English word love, you have different verbs and different nouns that are used in the Greek. And so this is a great way to study, you know, and also to see different places where that word is used. Right? The other thing that we have in this tool, and there's a lot, lot of things, but the other useful thing are commentaries. Okay. Now, there are literally many commentaries available freely, right? And uh, it's just not possible to read all the commentaries. And uh, you know, I don't necessarily read all the commentaries, but uh, the the ones that I would recommend one is a comment, the David Guzik's commentary. Uh, the reason I recommend David Guzik is because it's, he, he comes from a spirit filled perspective, right? So he, he acknowledges um, the work of the Holy Spirit, and he comes from a spirit filled perspective. So that's one commentary I would recommend. Uh, Finnis Dake. This is a purchased commentary. Uh, so you have to pay for this. David Guzik is free. You can download it. Uh, Finnish Dake is a paid commentary, but that's also something I use. And then, of course, there are uh, Vincent Word Study. So when you are studying a word, he'll give you the meaning of that word. Let's look at it. Example. Uh, a virtuous woman. Okay. Fin Finnish Dake, he gives you, you know, some... He's studying on the word virtuous, and uh, there are cross references also. Where is this word being used? Um, let me find another word, maybe righteous. Okay, no, Vincent word studies. Maybe he does only the New Testament. Right, yeah. So uh, Vincent word study. So he comes up here, he gives you commentaries on words that are used in Mark chapter 14, verse 1. Suppose you go to Mark chapter 14, verse 3, he'll give you some commentary on, uh, on these words here. Right? Uh, and, you know, David, David Guzik has this commentary here on Mark chapter 14. So he, he has a chapter by chapter commentary. So there's a lot of information here, but this is, you know, useful. I don't always read everything. Uh, you know, sometimes when I want to, you know, if I, want to get some more information, I would read these commentaries, but it's a useful thing to have. Now, the thing is there are many commentaries. Okay, so don't go there and download everything because you won't read it. You won't have time to read it, right? So download a few that you will actually read and it will help you in your study. Uh, th these, are, these are things that I would recommend. You know, uh, Meyer uh, cross-reference, Vincent Word Studies, that you can use. Um, so here, when you go to download, that's where you can download various Bibles, commentaries, dictionaries, and so on. So if you see it, just to show you, you click on Bibles, you will see uh, how many Bibles are available, right? All these different Bibles are available. Uh, and it's like, it's more than what we can actually use. But all these Bibles, this whole, all of these are free. Uh, and then there are those that you can purchase, like the Amplified Bible uh, and so on. And they're not, not very expensive, right? And there are, again, free Bibles that are in different languages. 
you want to read in German or French you, or other languages, you can read. Okay. Similarly, commentaries. Look at it. If you click on the commentaries tab, you see all these commentaries are available. Right now, I haven't put all of them here, but there's so many commentaries that are available. Uh, you can put them down, you know, and then there are also purchased commentaries if you want. Um, there are dictionaries. Again, there are so many dictionaries available for free, and there are dictionaries that you can pay for. Uh, reference books are also there uh, by you know uh, old authors, uh, people from. Uh, these are all public domain books, so you could, they're giving them for free. So a lot of information available, and uh, honestly, I, I, we don't have time to use all of that, right? But you just take what you want. But the thing that I find most useful is looking up the Hebrew and the Greek. That's what I do most of the time, almost all the time when I'm studying. I look up the Hebrew, look up the Greek, look up the dictionaries. So I just make sure I understand the correct meaning and then interpret it uh, from that. OK, any questions? Telugu, huh? uh, yeah, I, 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 I am sure they will have Telugu. Yeah, Bible, Hindi they have, Malayalam, Spanish, Vietnamese, Urdu, Telugu, ah, Telugu. They have two. They have the easy to read version and they have the Indian revised version. The Indian revised version is from 2019, so I think it'll be most latest. Any other language? <laughs> Good, see, they have, they have uh, many languages. Hindi? I, I don't know. Um, we can check. So uh, this is a very good tool. I'd encourage you to um, FGH Gujarati. Hindi, they have two. Yeah, same thing. Easy to read and Indian revised version, two versions. OK, so I'd encourage you to use this tool um, to study the word. OK, um, let me just see if there are any questions from our online students. Uh, any questions from your students online? Sean? Um, yeah, I, I haven't tried it on the phone. I think they have. Um, for the phone, you can check on the website, but I think it's uh, they have a they might have a paid version of for the phone. I'm not very really sure. Just check. They have a paid version for Mac app phones. App phones. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they may have you know free versions, paid versions, and all that. But this is a very useful tool. Now, uh, any questions from our online students? Everything OK? Any questions? All right. So let me just share the PDF. I'll uh, make myself visible shortly. So we just looked at um, eastward uh, being, this is what, I mean, right now, we just went through eastward. I'm going to give a quick walkthrough on it. I'd encourage you to download it and use it. Uh, and I mentioned some of these things here, uh, the commentary that I would recommend. Uh, there are a lot of other commentaries, but um, you know, when you read a commentary, don't just take everything they say, uh, you know, because a lot of it is their own personal thought, personal uh, things. So uh, some things you can take, some things you don't take. Just leave it aside. Um, and there are useful dictionaries, uh, the Wines Dictionary and uh, the Dix Bible, all of these things are there. Now, uh, along with this, there are many other resources okay, that uh, you can go and explore, and, and many of them are free. Uh, there is the U version, that, you know, mo and that we just, most of us have it on the phone. 
Um, uh, we have many versions of the Bible, audio Bible, so that's available. Uh, there is Blue Letter Bible. Again, a lot of um, lot of comment commentaries are available uh, in the Blue Letter Bible. Again, in my observation, uh, there is so much information; it's it's almost like overwhelming. Right? But thank God, you know, they've made all this available for free. Uh, so some people like to use Blue Letter Bible. It's just another online uh, Bible study resource, right? You can go there. And uh, they have lots of commentaries, and I think they've built in sermons, sermon clips, so you can actually listen to what some so and so said on, on that passage. So a lot of things have been built in. Another major one is from Logos. So you can go to logos.com and download their software. I think I did download it as well. Um, but here again, this particular Bible software is very rich, meaning it has a lot of content in it, uh, a lot of modern, modern um, or contemporary teachers and authors and all of that. So Logos Bible software has a lot of that content. Uh, again, it's a, uh, it's a, um, yeah, what to say? It's it's loaded. It's, it has a lot of content information in it. Uh, for Bible study and so on, and BibleGateway.com. That's online as well, and I think some of you may be familiar with it. That also has a lot of uh, resources. Um, so I have um, spent most of the time on Eastward. That's because I use that, but there are many other tools available today that you can use. Uh, you can you know, have a look at all of these. You see what whatever you're comfortable, and you use it. But uh, I just want to mention that. Keep in mind that there are theologians from different perspectives, right? So, for example, Logos or uh, Blue Letter Bible, or so on. There are Bible teachers and theologians who come from many different perspectives. That means they will, for example, uh, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, so if you listen to somebody who is from an evangelical perspective, they may give their view on it uh, or read what they say. They'll give their view on it. And you look uh, from somebody from a Pentecostal perspective, they will give their view on it. So you have to be a little careful because you'll get confused. You know, because on one verse, if you have so many different te Bible teachers talking and commentaries, you'll find differences. So that's where you be fully persuaded. You know, so you say, I have studied the Bible, I have I'm fully persuaded on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or I am fully persuaded that yeah, today we can speak in tongues, and so on and so forth. And then you be fully persuaded in your mind, having studied the Bible, before you go and start reading all these commentaries, right? Because you'll have all different speaker authors and Bible teachers coming from their own pers denominational perspective, and it can become very confusing. So uh, that's why when I study, I kind of limit myself to reading the Bible, looking at it in different versions, look up the Hebrew, the Greek, and the dictionaries. That's basically what I do most of the time. I don't waste my time reading all the different commentaries, and you know, uh, I might look a little bit here and there, but that's occasionally. But most of the time, I do my study, then I can, you know, uh, come to conclusions based on my study. Okay. Um, any questions on this? Yes. So, um, sorry, Prince. Uh, could you uh, repeat that question? Oh, you're saying, or, or do we have Hebrew and Greek in the Blue Letter Bible? Um, I am sorry. I, I had my camera off all this while. Um, Hebrew and Greek in the Blue Letter Bible. I'm not sure. I haven't. Um, it might be. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't really checked that part. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, Roshan, you want to say something? Pastor, I guess there is a Hebrew and Greek in the Blue Letter Bible because I've used it. Uh, I'm sorry, Roshan? There is Hebrew and Greek in the Blue Letter Bible. Oh, I have used okay. it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so Roshan says that there, the Hebrew and the Greek is there. Um, so he's used it. So, yeah. Thank you, Roshan. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? All right. Yeah, Sean. Oh, um, from from the others, what would be the second best option? Huh? They're all free. Yeah. Uh, Eastwood. Yeah, the one for Windows is is free that like the one you download on your laptop uh, that's uh, free uh, among the others see honestly i haven't what to say i haven't used the others extensively like you know i've just gone and seen it a little bit and seen what it has uh, but i haven't used them extensively so i, I wouldn't be the right person to um Make a comparison of the others, um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think I should <laughs> say something when I haven't really uh, compared them. I know they are there. I've gone and seen them a little bit, uh, and I've had my first impressions of those other uh, free Bible study websites and software, but I haven't really compared them. To say that this is better, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just let you, you know, maybe go look at all of them and see which one you feel comfortable with. I think uh, the important thing is to feel comfortable using it. Right? That uh, for me, I felt overwhelmed actually. I opened Logos and has so much information. I said, I'm not, I don't have time to read all this. You know, it's good the information is there, um, but it's too much. You know, I don't have time for that. Uh, similarly, Blue Letter Bible, you know, there's so much content. Uh, I don't have time to go through all that. So I like something very simple that helps me do my study without getting distracted here and there with so many other commentaries and so on. So, but anyway, I will let you, you know, go and explore these tools, see what you're comfortable with, and you use whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, but these tools are available. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry. Olive tree. Yeah, I've heard of olive tree. Um, I haven't used it. I haven't used it. Yeah. You can take notes on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm sure there. There are probably others as well, uh, but I haven't used. These are some things I've seen. Yeah. Okay. So the point is this. The point is, uh, there are a lot of resources that are available. Uh, you pick one and study. The only warning I would give is uh, that don't get too distracted with the information that's around there. Make sure you study the Bible. You know, otherwise, you'll be studying commentaries. You'll be studying what some person said. And your goal is not to know what you know so and so said. Your goal is to know what did the Bible say? What did God say in his words? Right? So study the Bible, but use whatever tools that will help you study the Bible. Right? Otherwise, what will happen is you know, there's so much of these commentaries and all that. Don't spend your don't waste your time reading the commentaries, reading, listening to this person, that person. No, you read the Bible, study the Bible, study the verses, study the chapters, look up the Hebrew and the Greek, look up the dictionaries, and you understand. Right? To help you do it, if you want to read a little bit outside here and there, okay, but don't get caught up in it because there's so much information. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm going to. 
Yeah. So I'm going to move forward now, maybe just introduce our next lesson. Uh, any questions? Online students, everybody's very quiet here. OK. All right. Um, I'm going to move forward to the next. Um, let, let me share. All right. So having gone through the tools that are available for us, what I want to um, just I'm not sure what happened here. Uh, is that as we progress now into biblical interpretation, it's very important to depend on the illumination of the Holy Spirit. So on the one side, we are going to do our part. Right? You make use of the tools, look up the Hebrew, look up the Greek. Uh, you read it in different versions, read the dictionary. OK, OK, all that is good. That is your part. But we have to depend on the Holy Spirit. So we have to be able to bring this together. right? So when you are doing your study, you do it prayerfully. Say, Holy Spirit, help me understand. And our goal is to receive the illumination that comes from the Holy Spirit, because he is the one who inspired the scriptures. He is the original author of the Bible. He used men to write it. Today, here we are, we are doing our study of, you know, doing our background, doing a cultural study, this, that, all that. We're doing, that's our part, but then we have to depend on the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, illuminate my mind. He will give us insight, will give us revelation. Okay? So that is important. Now, what we know is that the natural man cannot understand the things of God. That means the man who is only depending on his mind, his intellectual power, right? Uh, spiritually, he's blinded. And uh, the natural man, the unsaved man, cannot understand spiritual things. OK? So we must not depend exclusively on our natural mind. Use the mind, try to understand the Hebrew, the Greek, the English, the language, etc. But depend on the illumination of the Holy Spirit to give us insight into Scripture. And so, you know, um, uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 21, uh, the Apostle Paul, he prays for the Ephesians. He says, I'm praying that God will give you the spirit of wisdom, and revelation, right? Understanding, revelation in the knowledge of Him, right? So the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us wisdom and understanding in knowing Him, in knowing our calling, in knowing the inheritance that is there, in knowing the power of God. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom and revelation. He has to open our eyes, enlighten the eyes of our understanding, and um, uh, give it to us. So just a thought here. Inspiration was given once. The Holy Spirit inspired the authors. But illumination is given over and over again. That means he gives you light over and to all of us, different people. As we read, he illuminates. He opens our eyes or he gives us revelation. right? Um, and, he, and he helps us see things that we need to see. Right? Now, I want to just point to uh, uh, something here. That, and we have this great, beautiful example in Matthew 16, um, verses 13 to 23, when you know, when Jesus asked his disciples, Whom do you say I am? Uh, you know, whom do people say I am? So they said, Some people are saying John the Baptist, some people are saying Elijah, so on and so forth. Then Jesus asked his disciples, Whom do you say I am? Like you can imagine, they've been following Jesus for almost two years, exam, uh, about two years. I don't know exactly what, how much. They've been following him. They have left everything. 
they are li literally living with Jesus and he's asking them, who do you think I am? They're, and they're all very quiet. Hey, you're following this person. You've given up everything to be with this person and you don't know who he is. They're quiet. <laughs> it's a very peculiar situation. Then suddenly Peter speaks out. He says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. Christ means Messiah. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And then Jesus tells Peter, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my father in heaven. That means, Peter, you did not learn this from other people. You know, human beings, flesh and blood didn't reveal to you. But God in heaven revealed it to you. So how did Peter, how did the other disciples know who Jesus was? How did they know? Who was Jesus? If you look at it in the natural, Jesus was just an ordinary person. He was born in a carpenter family. He must have been working as a carpenter for 30 years till his age 30. So if you go in the shop, Jesus is behind, he's hitting the hammer and doing all that. Look at him, carpenter. But now these disciples in their heart, they know this is the Christ, the Messiah, the son of the living. But how did they know? Jesus, Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal to you. But my Father who is in heaven. So see, this is revelation. It is something you know inside you, which God has revealed to you. And sometimes the natural doesn't agree, or there may not be too much natural evidence. Because you look at Jesus, he's just a carpenter. He was born to in that family. He was working like a carpenter. His father is a carpenter. And the natural, that's what it is. But they felt, Peter, you are Christ, the son of the living. How, Peter, how do you know this revelation? Inside me, I know. It's like my eyes are seeing something. My spiritual eyes are seeing something that my natural, that is not very obvious to my natural eyes. That is revelation. You understand it? So we need that. Paul prayed for believers. He said, may God give you the spirit of wisdom and understanding to see these things. But I also want to point out in that same chapter, in Matthew 16, the same man who received revelation from the Father also went into error. So what do you mean? In that same chapter, afterwards, Jesus was telling his disciples, I'm going to go and I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be delivered to the hands of the Gentiles. They're going to crucify me. And then Peter says, Lord, that is not going to happen to you. And how does Jesus respond? Get behind me, Satan. Hey, five minutes back. The Father has given you revelation. Five minutes later, get behind me, Satan. I'm just saying five minutes. I don't know exactly. We don't know exactly how much time. I'm just making up. But shortly after, get behind me, Satan. Same man. Get behind me, Satan. You don't understand the things of God. few minutes back, by revelation, he was saying, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You, some shortly after. No revelation, full confusion. <laughs> he said, I won't let you go. I won't let you go to the cross. But the point is this. The same person can be right about one thing 
and wrong about another thing. Same verse. He can be right about one thing because God has revealed that. But he can be wrong about another thing because he's operating from his mind, his own mind. Same person. So we have to be very careful. Okay. We'll pick up here next class. I, I heard the bell ring, so we'll stop here. Uh, we'll get ready for the class, our next uh, class, and we'll pick this up. Okay. All right. Let's pause here. I'm sorry for stopping abruptly. Uh, we'll get ready for next class. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We'll pick this up next week and take this forward. Thank you. Bye now.